Hello and welcome to Goa Open Arts Festival and Art History Plus podcast. We're going to speak to Deep Tej Veerneker. Uh, super busy guy. He's waiting over there. He's an extremely busy guy. We have 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, we're going to try to get as much as we can from this guy. Uh, he's an artist. amazing sculptor uh, i've known him for the last 10 years uh, been for multiple residencies with him in the capacity of myself because i was an artist at the time and i uh, i'm really proud to have him uh, be a part of this podcast because he's also the organizer and producer of the goa open arts festival he won't have time uh, he might just we'll keep it short uh, but he has a lot of he has a lot of uh, ideas and it'll help you uh, understand Uh, the nitty gritty is behind uh, the making of a festival or production what it means to actually face backlashes from a lot of people because you say no to a lot of people and you say yes to a very select few of people uh, it's a big responsibility uh, he's a young guy he's taken up that responsibility with a small very sensitive group of people who are like minded uh, in goa they care about goa they care about it being an open call they care about being inclusive Uh, it's all good stuff uh, but it's very tough to produce so please watch this podcast and get a quick take on what deep tej uh, thinks feels and believes in thank you as you can see i'm sitting with deep tej vernegar the organizer for the goa open arts he's extremely busy right now so let me give an introduction you continue so he's extremely busy but let me just say one thing it's very tough pulling off a festival these guys are extremely busy i've got 15 minutes he can go in the middle of the podcast he said no to this podcast but now i've got him so he's going to say yes we have done everything all the setup is right uh, and uh, look at him he's like not even saying hi this hi uh, welcome to goa open arts and art history plus podcast this is we're in goa by the way uh, we've got diptej vernekar after four and a half days because he's just running around producing a festival a uh, tough job he's also an artist and this podcast is brought to you by lananta absinth liquid of legends distilled in goa as you can see it's a fantastic absinth brand uh, the 100 year ban global ban of absinth has been taken off now in the world and uh, india has its own absinth brand that's lananta absinth it's right there it's available in goa assam nagpur google it we don't have time we have time with uh the page for 5 minutes can you explain the journey of being an artist and then also taking this intense responsibility of being the producer of the goa open arts festival yeah i mean i'm basically an artist at the same time as you already mentioned um so i think it was quite uh, incidental i guess when i came on board Hmm. uh the, like prashant and uh, gopika already started the initiative with the uh, the intention of having a platform for goa based and goa artists hmm. uh, to have a point where all sorts of uh, discipline can come together and um, have a intimate set of festival so that's what the first uh, our uh, plan was to That's when how we started in Nagwa in 2020. I've heard all the founders yeah. say this thing intimate. It's a very like it, this festival is very sensitive yeah. festival. It's not like one mela. Like uh, all yeah. the founders have mentioned I mean, this word. It has the flavor of both a very serious kind of art uh, art forms at the same time having a local community engagement which we lack at some level when you and when you put a show which has very sleek sort of uh, aesthetic you tend to lose overall Uh, general audience of the festival but we kind of balance that in our setting you want to have more local talent yeah in goa that's the main, uh, may, uh, our main uh, base of the festival i'm going to interview gopika also but can yeah. you explain to me uh, the birth of goa open arts and also why the word open the word self explain everything Achha, go, yeah. goa open arts yeah. because it's like an open call yeah so we kind of st- uh, have a democratic setup uh, when we uh, not select i mean when we think of art artworks and artists to be part of the festival we call, we uh, op- we open our call on our website instagram and then we kind of bring all this cu- not curation but uh, i mean certain level of selection of work hmm. 
and yeah. what is are you showing i mean yeah i'm also the, showing you're the boss yeah. here, so you like mera kaam dalo <laughs> no not like that but <laughs> yeah i mean yeah open the door for me <laughs> we should be also part of it that is Come the intention hmm. because since all of us who are organizer are in a way creative people and they have their personal practice as well so yeah that, that is the thing yeah. hmm. can we talk about your journey of of as being an artist now I Let's guess. Get a I intimate. guess uh, from the beginning, even from my uh, bachelor's time, I have been like very uh, attracted towards this kind of uh, activities where uh, I can bring my fellow friends in my club batchmates. Uh, we were been le- leading my friend who is also part of the festival, oh. Bis- Bisaji. Bisaji. So yeah. we were ba- batchmates, oh. and we were quite active during our college days. we were those people who were always pushing people to join us and calling their parents to just allow them to stay at night so i think that force was there inside us right. and that's what translate later in your life i guess that's sure yeah. i last gopika if she also had that same <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah oh you're possible obviously Poss- because yeah, you need energy to yeah otherwise you can't sustain the Uh, the chaos no you you can't you you become hyper intense at some moments and and the people who have that level of patience only can sustain that kind of chaos i don't yeah. know whether to ask you art related questions or festival related because you're a producer of art you're also a festival producer now anything yeah any <laughs> you can ask both word. yeah no okay so then what what are the there are many people yeah who applied for the goa open arts festival yeah. and many people didn't get uh they didn't get to be a part of the festival yeah. because many people applied and they think you know everyone thinks they are an artist and everyone thinks that their yeah. work is really amazing yeah. can you explain take the, take the call take the call hello as you can see deep tej where yeah. he is extremely busy ha harj karke ek aayega wo we are in the middle of the production of the festival aapka number bheja hai like comment and subscribe to art history plus main bhejta hu usko number aapko bhejega bhejega No, no. Take the calls. Uh, don't. Uh, oh my God, that's insane amount of messages. Okay, I peeked into his phone. Yeah. Busy man, man. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Are you Are you cool? I'm good. Yeah. Can yeah. we now please discuss the podcast? Bhau ka des. Okay. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> okay. No, I'm sure you have. Uh, uh, can you? So many artists yeah. did not get. I met uh, about eight or ten of them uh, outside the festival. They're protesting, saying that we didn't get to be part of the festival. Oh, seriously, I am now feeling very <laughs> guilty about I it. I didn't get to I be mean. part of the festival. I went for a party last night, and people said, "Hey, I applied for the Goa Open Arts Festival," and uh, uh, they were like, "We didn't get in." And also, can you? I mean, a lot of people now. This is this is a. A, a a superb festival in goa is pretty famous everyone knows that when people apply what should they look for what do you look for How i mean i know i may not be able to answer the all the questions mm-hmm. because on the uh, open platform maybe but at some level it's a part of production call sometimes the project is quite heavily pro- uh, heavy in production so that is not possible because we are a group of bunch of people who pull together with our own personal set of potential from infrastructure to the finances so sometimes that is not possible maybe that may be a reason to not getting but it's not that uh, we don't lose out our applications completely we kind of keep them in our archive so that in next uh, any kind of platform we call them and we have done that even in last uh, uh, last festival there were some uh, projects which were not we were not able to produce them but projects projects were really good but then we f- kind of find a way either in the form of festival or in the form of our um, uh, fundraisers what we do so in that we call them because every artwork has the certain level of potential in terms of where to go that's sure yeah, yeah. and so then these works are also for sale yeah and okay so then an artist is also looking at um, and so th- and yeah that is another way we are looking at it we also try and find for uh, patrons and uh, buyers so that it it's not only about display because that's not the final goal it and also it needs to have uh, reach towards buyers and yeah sure. so that at least artists should have some some other level of commercial benefit uh, approximately how many people come for this festival i mean l- Uh, this time uh, it's uh, bigger in a sense from last time it was smaller <laughs> yeah thank you 
so we are hoping that 1000 to 2000 of crowd per day per day yeah let's see that's let's more hope. than yaar rehman's concert <laughs> no but acro- not at one point <laughs> one at one point of time across uh, the day sure yeah because we have a uh, tight very tight set of uh, programming in yeah. span of 3 days then what display also goes for till 29 uh, 28th of february hmm. you have a lot of people coming and being a part of this festival from interns volunteers production people uh, the you know the curatorial hmm. the social media a bunch of different organizations and you guys are just a bunch of artists no reason yeah. their mba no <laughs> so is it managed well <laughs> I guess we also have Tell us ma- the problems of the making a, a festival. I mean, you know how, No, I don't uh, know. I, I mean, don't, as an as an artist, you are in a way messed up. You are not <laughs> des- that much disciplined, <laughs> but we kind of have to be disciplined at some at organizational skills and skill set. I know I am not so good at organizational skills, but Prashant Gopi and Abha uh, Sitara Gurpreet they are quite well well good in terms of uh, management. management yeah and so they wanted some energy from <laughs> from asli artists possibly possibly yeah I, i i i look into that uh, minor details of display i have, i look into the more production production yeah. space and all and you have siddesh chari also yeah yeah an artist, he's been like driving force of festival the production guy siddesh yeah. chari shout out to siddesh chari yeah he's uh, he's not only an artist but also a uh, big time uh, contributor and supporter for the organization organization that's great yeah. so there's a small community of people in goa who uh, yeah. are well wishers for the goa open arts festival yeah. and they actively contribute their time resources uh, and relationships to to make sure the goa open arts festival is a hit i wish it was a hit it was a great con time it, i had a great time talking to you yeah uh, i will so want much. to do a podcast we'll do a podcast later with him in the capacity of being an artist yeah. for right now uh, can you ask people to like comment and subscribe to artist plus and come for the goa open arts 2024 yeah. i in might one breath. be it might be difficult for me to <laughs> in one sentence you might have to cut it go for it yeah. go for it do like do like share and subscribe to go art and artist plus and do come for our festival which is very small intimate but yet very big, big and ambitious in its heart